What's going on everybody? Digital Dev here, and today we're looking at the Fenrir ODE mod for the Sega Saturn. What this does is replaces your Sega Saturn's optical drive with this device right here, which will allow you to play backed up games from a micro SD card. Now this model in particular is a Japanese launch Saturn, but you may have a different model. Just as long as your optical drive has the 20 pin connector, then this mod will work for you. So we're gonna open this up, take a look, and we're gonna get started with the installation. So after you remove the five screws from the bottom, what you wanna do is flip it back on its top and just gently remove the bottom here because, or sorry, the top. Generally remove the top here because at the bottom left is going to be the power supply cable. So when you lift this up, then, you know, it might be a little tough, but there will be enough give for you to get it to this point, and you'll just unclip the power supply right here. And there are a few other cables kind of lying around that you'll want to be careful of, but you should have enough give in order for this to be fine. So what I'll do is I'll just lay this right here like this, and so here we have the optical drive. So the components that we're going to be putting onto the Fenrir are the power supply right here, and this cable right here for the data. So what you'll want to do with your optical drive is we're going to remove these two and we're also going to remove the data cable. So I'm going to take this one out like this. There we go. Remove the power. There we go. Just, you know, just wiggle it a little bit, you know, maybe don't yank it out, but you know, just give it a little wiggle and it should come out easy enough. And the same thing with the data cable here. And there we go. And so your optical drive will now be free. Just like that. So we'll put that off to the side. Maybe use that as a donor for another console. You know, just keep it on the side. And now we will install the Fenrir. And honestly, this is this is the easiest pie because we have this power right here and the data cable. That's the only two things you need. So you're gonna pop it onto the posts here. So there may be a, a distance issue here. So what I like to do is just put on one of the posts and this is plastic, so it had, the posts are plastic, so it has a bit of give. So kind of just, we'll put it on one of the posts and then we'll move it back. Kind of just put the second post into place and it's just gonna hold just like that. So what we'll do now is we'll remove this capped on tape here from the power supply, because it is a little short. And we'll just pop that on top of the fan rear, like so. And then for the data cable, you'll just bend this one backwards like this. And then we'll just pop it in there. There we go, just give it a little wiggle. There we go. Kind of just make sure it's in there nice and tight. And then what you'll do at this point, you'll grab a micro SD card, pop it in the top there. You know, put everything back together, throw the Saturn cap on, and you're ready to go. So let's check out how to set up the SD card for use with the Fenrir. All right, so we're back at the computer. At this point, we'll get the micro SD card set up for use with the Fenrir, along with getting the firmware updated. The first step is to get the micro SD card set up as FAT32. I'm personally using Rufus, but if you've got another method, by all means, use that. So we're going to start by selecting the device that you have, micro SD card here, I've already got it named, in the D drive, so we'll select that. Boot selection will be non-bootable. Partition scheme has to be MBR, and target system should just be set to BIOS or UEFI by default. Name it whatever you want, but make sure the file system is FAT32, and also use the default cluster size. So we'll hit start, it's going to tell us it's going to format and destroy the data on the drive, we'll hit OK there. And then we'll just let this run for several seconds. All right, so now our SD card is all set and we'll start getting the necessary software on there to get the firmware updated and to get the Fenrir working with some games. Now that the drive has been formatted, let's get the necessary software onto the SD card. Both of these pieces of software will be listed in the link in the description. Fenrir.iso allows the software to properly run so you can play games, and this update.bin is for the firmware update. So we'll grab those, drag them to the SD card, 
And it's that easy. So now we're ready to get some games on there. So now you'll take your games, backups of course, and move them onto the SD card. The Fenrir accepts CCD, IMG, single ISO, QISO, and QBIN image formats. Just be aware that there's a 300 game limit and some multi-disc games don't work. Games that load data separately from each disc will work, but anything that requires a disc swap in the middle of play does not work at this time. So we can just grab all of these, drag them over to the Fenrir, and just let it do its thing. Also note that the Fenrir does not work with a deep folder structure at this time, so you can't nest folders within each other. And also each game does have to be in its own folder. So now that all of your games are on the micro SD card, let's pop this in the Fenrir and get it turned on, get the firmware updated, and let's play some games. So when you first boot up your Saturn after loading in the Fenrir, you're going to be met with a blank screen for about 10 to 15 seconds while the firmware updates. Once the firmware update is complete, then you will see the Sega Saturn splash screen. And once you get past that, you'll be met with the Fenrir menu. So this is all the games I have on here. As of this recording, there is an issue with the overscan, as you can see with my recording here, but that should be fixed in a future firmware update as I've seen them working on it on Twitter. If you go on the option menu right here, the refresh SD content is for when you either erase or add new content to the SD card and put it back in the Fenrir. You'll hit this and then it will update the menu with whatever games you have added or removed. And the region, you'll just want to set the region to what your console is, but that won't affect any of the games. The Fenrir by design is region free, so you don't have to worry about it on that end. This is just setting it for the console. So now select the game, and you'll be ready to go. Head down to Sonic R. So now you'll be brought to this menu. The game will take a couple seconds to load, and you'll want to hit the start application icon here at the top left. Now, if you're on a Japanese Saturn like me, and want to have the menu in English, what you can do is go to this icon right here at the top, hit A, go down the bottom right, hit A again, go down one, hit A, the language menu, and just select English. You'll get out of here, hit B at this menu, and now you can exit. So now the menu will be in English, and you can navigate your way around if you need to do that. So start application up here, and the game's gonna load. So I don't have any comparison, but I know the Fenrir doesn't add too much to improve the load time as it's ultimately gonna be limited by the Saturn's transfer speed. And that's it. So for about $120, I don't believe you can go wrong with the Fenrir. Setup is easy enough, and with the cost of Saturn games seemingly only trending upwards, it's definitely getting pricey to be a Saturn collector. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.